sixth lecture on BJT biostability continued. In the last lecture, fifth one, we had discussed this particular bias arrangement, which is the most common bias arrangement, that is an emitter resistor which is bypassed by a capacitor CE plus VCC, this is an NPN transistor, R sub C <coughs> and then we have a coupling capacitor C2 which goes to the load resistance RL, this is the output voltage V0 and at the input the biasing is done through a potential divider, two resistances R1 <coughs> and R2. Then the signal is applied through a capacitor C1 and a voltage source, a signal source Vs. Vs could have an internal resistance Rs, okay. This is the, this is a complete C amplifier and the DC part of the circuit, the DC part of the circuit is this. This is the DC part of the circuit. DC does not, is not affected by the capacitors. These are coupling capacitors, this is a bypass capacitor. Okay. We also uh, took a particular example which we shall carry throughout our discussion in which we had taken VCC as equal to 12 volt, I think, 12 volt. R sub C was 100 ohms, RL was 100 ohms, RE was also 100 ohms. R1 was 6.8 K and R2 was 6.8 K. We are not specifying RS, C1, C2, C3, C1, C2, CE uh, because they do not affect our operation at the moment, at the moment, biostabilization. We also discussed that the BJT bias point, that is the Q point or the operating point which is the value of I sub C and V sub C E, this defines the operating point Q inside a bounded region in the I sub C V C E characteristic. The bound occurs due to various reasons, let me use different colors, one is the PDA, P maximum allowable dissipation, P max. One is this hyperbola. Second is the breakdown voltage. This is V, C, E, O, the breakdown voltage. That is the voltage beyond which you cannot go without the junction breaking down. There is a maximum current limit. You cannot draw more than this, I sub C max. On the lower side, on the lower side there is a saturation line, saturation line and finally there is a cutoff line. So it is this region, this region within which the Q point has to lie and in order that the amplifier is able to handle a reasonable amount of signal voltage, the Q point must lie somewhere in the middle, somewhere well inside the region, okay. If it is close to the cutoff, then obviously the dynamic range will be very small. If it is close to P max, well, the transistor might break down because this P max is for his manufacturer specification. And you know that even if fabricated by the same process steps, there are lot of variations between one transistor and another from the same lot and therefore you cannot take that risk of operating near PMAX. <laughs> you can't go to VCEO, you can't go close to ICMAX, you can't go close to SAT. So the Q point has to be somewhere here. And we, we showed that the Q point it lies on what is called a DC load line, a DC load line where this point is given by VCC, okay, and this current is given by 
this is C divided by yes R C plus R E. This is plus R E with a certain assumption. What was the assumption? That beta is much greater than unity. This is the D C load line D C L L and in addition we also said that there is an A C load line which passes through the Q point which passes to the Q point but has a higher slope and A C load line is somewhat like this A C L L whose slope is minus 1 over R L dash which is R C parallel R L. Okay. This is this describes what we did last time. Now we start from this point. We said that not only we want to establish a Q point, we would also like to stabilize the Q point. We would like also like to make sure that if the transistor is replaced by another transistor of the same number or if temperature increases or decreases which causes a change of beta, VBE and also ICBO, all the three quantities change or if there is a fluctuation in the power supply VCC changes then naturally VBB also changes and there may be a change in the parameters also therefore the Q point not only we want to establish it we want to stabilize it and um, this is what we want to investigate today. Yes you have a question? You have a question? Do not bite the pen. Okay. <coughs> we established this relation that I sub B I sub B the base current by taking the uh, left loop that is the base loop we established that this is given by VBB minus VBE minus ICBO beta plus 1 we are not making any approximation beta plus 1 multiplied by RE divided by RB plus beta plus 1 RE this is the value of I sub B that we had established relating I sub B to VBE to ICBO and beta. These are the three variable quantities. All right. You also know from the relation that I sub C equal to IB times beta plus beta plus 1 ICBO. This is a fundamental relation. Yes. Uh, is ICBO same as ICO? That is right. We are using the additional symbol B because of uh, the conventions. Okay. This is the common emitter and it is used as CBO. If it is common base, then the current that would be effective would be ICEO, which is ICBO multiplied by beta plus 1. Okay. Now, if I combine this with this, that is, if I write this IB as equal to I sub C minus beta plus 1 ICBO divided by beta <coughs> isn't this isn't this uh, doesn't this follow from this relation yeah. okay now therefore and I ignore the rest of the quantities then this should be equal to this from which you get a relation between I sub C the collector current and the other quantities this algebra after clearing the mess the result is not too complicated what we get is the following I sub C is equal to beta times VBB minus VBE plus ICBO beta plus 1 multiplied by RB plus RE divided by RB plus beta plus 1 RE. Okay. This is one of the coordinates of the Q point and the other coordinate is VCE, VCE which is equal to VCC minus R sub C plus R E with that assumption beta much greater than 1, beta much greater than 1 multiplied by I sub C. Therefore, if I can stabilize I sub C, I have stabilized VCE also. So, all we need to do 
is to focus our attention on this, on the stabilization of the collector current against variations in beta, beta varies, VBE varies and ICBO varies, okay, beta varies. This varies. So, but uh, if our VCC also varies? If VCC also varies, then you are uh, <coughs> stuck. VBB will vary then. Well, if VB, there are ways of compensating for variations in VCC also, but what is preferred is that you use a regulated power supply rather than an unregulated power supply. In other words, you make VCC constant by using a regulated power supply, all right. That is relatively easy to take care. If this is not constant, then we will make a simple Zener diode regulator and apply that to the transistor circuit. So, let us look at the <coughs> variation of I sub C, which we shall call delta I C due to a change of beta, due to a change of VBE, due to a change of ICBO separately. There are three parameters, you see I sub C is a function of three variables VBE, beta and ICBO. So, let us find out partial I sub C that is delta I C due to a change of let us say VBE when beta and ICBO are held constants. Then we will investigate change due to beta when VBE and ICBO are held constants, okay. The three factors separately, then we shall try to combine them, all right. This will be our procedure. Actually, what we should do is strictly, what we should do is that we consider two situations. What we should do is the following. We consider two situations. In under one situation, the collector current is IC1 which has beta equal to beta 1, VBE 1 and ICBO 1, all right. This may be at room temperature for example and at an increased temperature since all of them vary, let them vary to the following quantities ICBO 2 and let the resulting collector current be IC 2, <coughs> all right. Then we should uh, we should find out we should define delta IC as equal to IC2 minus IC1 and should find out delta IC as a function of delta beta which is beta 2 minus beta 1 this is simultaneously that is all the factors considered together beta 2 minus beta 1 delta VBE as equal to VBE2 minus VBE1 and delta ICBO as equal to ICBO2 minus ICBO1. This is what we should do. You understand what I mean? Take the circuit or take the expression I sub C, expression for I sub C, find out IC1, find out IC2, subtract the two, subtract this the first from the second due to the variation of all the three simultaneously and then find out the percentage change by dividing delta IC by IC1 and multiplying by 100. This will be the percentage change in the collector current. This is what you should do. But as you can see, the expression itself is quite involved and if I, if I do that, I can get an expression which will fill the whole page or take the next page also, but it is not very meaningful. And as engineers, we do not want to make life more complicated than what is demanded of the situation, okay. So, we try to make life simple and we shall instead, in, in one of the tutorial problems, we shall work out actually what happens with numerical values. That is not too difficult actual value of the percentage change in IC, but as far as <coughs> as far as mathematics is concerned, general formulas are concerned, let us consider uh, variations one at a time, then try to combine them. This is the engineer's approach, all right. Even here, we will make a simplification. Let me write this expression I sub C equal to beta VBB minus VBE plus ICBO beta plus 1 
आर बी प्लस आर ई डिवाइडेड बाय आर बी प्लस बीटा प्लस वन आर ई वन सिंप्लीफिकेशन दैट यू कैन वेरी इजीली डू इज द ट्रांजिस्टर विल बी यूजलेस इफ बीटा इज नॉट मार्च ग्रेटर देन यूनिटी सो यू कैन एस्यूम बीटा मार्च ग्रेटर देन यूनिटी एंड देन दिस एक्सप्रेशन बिकम्स बीटा If beta is much greater than unity, then one drops out. This one drops out, and beta can be taken out, right? Therefore, <coughs> what we get is beta V B B minus V B E plus I C B O R B plus R E. All right. Bracket closed. Beta is a common factor of the two expressions. And in the denominator, we get R B plus beta R E. <coughs> This is the assumption that beta is much greater than unity. All right. And we would also we would also do another uh, simplification, namely that when we consider variations with respect to beta or V B E, we shall ignore this I C B O term. Okay. <coughs> Otherwise, it's an unnecessary complication. We shall ignore this term, and uh, to uh, <coughs> to make things look uh, logical, let's calculate this term as compared to this term in the particular example <coughs> that we took. In the particular example, V B B minus V B E was equal to six volt, twelve. 6.8 and 6.8, so VBB is 6 volt and VBE was given as 0.6, so this is 5.4 volt. On the other hand, ICBO RB plus RE is equal to ICBO typically is 0.01 microamps, that is 10 to the minus 8 ampere, which is 10 nano ampere. This is a reasonable figure for a BGT. So ICBO RB plus RE is 10 to the minus 8 multiplied by RB is 6.8 parallel 6.8, so 3400 plus 100, which is 3500 times 10 to the minus 8. That is equal to. Um, 35 microvolt, agree? Which is indeed much less than 5.4 volt. Therefore, compared to this term, VBB minus VBE, we can ignore this term. But as long as we are considering variations with respect to beta or VBE, if we are considering variations with respect to ICBO itself, obviously we cannot do that, agree? We also know that ICBO doubles for every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature. So there may be a temperature at which this term shall become comparable. But as far as beta and VBE variations are concerned, let's ignore this. In other words, we take the expression I sub C as equal to beta VBB minus VBE divided by RB plus beta. R E, all right. So <coughs> let's consider delta I C. When beta changes, beta is beta one, and when beta one changes <coughs> to beta two, delta I C, which is I C two minus I C one, is equal to beta two. V B B minus V B E is a constant. I could as well take this out. Then beta two divided by R B plus beta two R E minus beta one divided by R B plus beta one R E. All right. This is delta I C due to a change of beta only. And what I have to do is to find out delta I C divided by I sub C one. If you clear this algebra and divide by I C one, while this algebraic simplification, I leave it to you. The expression very simply becomes becomes delta beta 
which is beta 2 minus beta 1 divided by beta 1 times Rb divided by Rb plus beta 2 Re. Let me write this again. <coughs> Delta IC divided by IC1 is equal to delta beta divided by beta 1 RB divided by RB plus beta 2 RE. Now <coughs> an observation. Suppose RE was equal to 0. Someone asked in the previous class why use an RE at all. Suppose RE is made equal to 0 then this term becomes unity which means that a 10 percent variation in beta will cause a 10 percent variation in I sub C. Isn't that right? Yes. In other words 1 to 1 even if beta changes by 1 percent I C will change by 1 percent whereas multiplication by this factor which can be made much less than unity how? By making beta 2 R E much greater than R B. If we do that then this quantity will be very small and therefore even a large change in beta will cause a small change in IC and that is what stabilization means, isn't that right? Even if beta changes by replacement of a transistor uh, which let us say beta is from is was 100 earlier and it is 150 now, even if that large change 50 percent change in beta we want to make I sub C as stable as possible. For example, in the particular example that we have taken, suppose beta changes from 100 to 150, nothing else changes. Then the right hand side becomes 50 delta beta divided by 150, no I am sorry, <coughs> beta 1 that is 100, okay, multiplied by R sub B is 3400. 3.4 k divided by R sub B 3400 plus beta 2 which is 150 multiplied by 100 okay R E is 100 ohms. So this would be delta I C by I sub C 1 and it calculates out to 9.2 percent. How did I get percent? I multiplied by 100 okay. Now look at this even a 50 percent change in beta <coughs> has caused a change of I sub C by, an, by a quantity less than 10 percent. So the reduction is almost one fifth. Is that clear? I can make it larger if I had used a higher value of Re. If I had used a higher value of Re, I could make it larger. Now if you recall, why not? Why do not you make Re as large as possible? Okay. That is a problem. Let us look at this problem. <coughs> the problem is the following. This is RE, okay, and this is VCC. This RE goes to ground, and you know VCE, VCE is equal to VCC minus I sub C RC plus RE. If you keep I sub C a constant, and increase RE naturally you will have to increase VCC and there is a limit to which VCC can be increased. Transistors basically are low voltage devices. You do not want to use a supply which is more than 12 volts. If you use a 100 volt supply yes it can be done but then 100 volt supply itself is a very bulky thing, right. So RE cannot be increased indefinitely. If we could do that there is one more, one more problem. Suppose we use a 100 volt supply, RE is sufficiently large. Due to some reason if RE gets shorted, due to some reason, due to mishandling, what will happen? The transistor will blow up because it will exceed V, C, E, O. Is that correct? Yeah. That high voltage shall come across the transistor and it will burn it off. Therefore it is risky business and RE there is a limit. The limit well, one should always try to make beta RE, we do not know at what under what condition, beta RE under all conditions should be much greater than RB and as you know 1 is to 10 
is electrical engineers much greater and therefore, the thumb rule is beta R e equal to R b <coughs> 10 times R. <coughs> if I make it in this particular case, well R b is 34 3.4 k, so this will be 34 k and therefore, R e needed would be if beta is 100, it would be 3.4 k. Well, it is not too bad, but you will have to increase your I beg your pardon, 0.34 k that is simply 340 ohms. We used a 100 ohm resistor and 340 ohms can jolly well be used without uh, without increasing the power supply to a large value. Okay. This is the story about beta. Let me also mention that beta usually increases with increase in temperature and the thumb rule is for every 100 degree C beta changes by 50 percent approximately 50 percent all right this is the thumb rule and therefore this change could as well be due to a change of temperature from 25 to 125 okay we'll take an example uh, of complete example at the end now let's look at the percent change in i sub c due to a change in vbe our expression is beta V B B minus V B E simplified expression divided by R sub B plus beta R E. Now, <coughs> our change is only in this quantity and if you follow the same procedure that is I C 1 V B E 1, I C 2 V B E 2 subtract one from the other and divide by I C 1, it is very easy to see that the expression shall be delta I C by I C 1 shall be equal to minus delta V B E divided by V B B minus V B E. This comes from the di division by I C 1. It is very simple, simple to do this algebra which I shall express as minus delta V B E divided by V B E all right, which V B E is this 1 or 2? 1 that is correct and therefore, I will use this 1 multiplied by <coughs> multiplied by V B E 1 and intentionally introduce this term to express percentage change divided by V B B minus V B E 1 all right and once again you see <coughs> that if this term is unity if this term was not there if this term was not there then 10 percent change in VBE would have caused 10 percent change in I sub C. However, because of the presence of this term which is less than unity because VBB is typically let us say 6 volt and VBE 1 is 10 times less 0 0.6 therefore, this quantity is less than unity and therefore, a 10 percent change in VBE will cause a much less change in I sub C and as you can see this sensitivity to VBE can be reduced drastically if you could make VBE VBB minus VBE 1 much greater than VBE 1 which means that VBB should be much greater than twice VBE 1. Okay. So, if we could make if we could make V B E 1 is 0 0.6, if we could make V B B approximately 12, okay, then we could have a reasonable stabilization of the operating point. But the situation that I have shown you is not too bad. Um, <coughs> as you can see, if I take that example, in our example it is uh, delta I C by I C 1 is equal to minus delta V E. Suppose there is a 100 degree centigrade rise in temperature. Let me take this. <coughs> Suppose temperature goes from 25 degree centigrade to 125 degree centigrade. Then V B E changes from V B E 1 to V B E 1 minus or plus? Minus. minus it decreases. 
so it is minus how much? 2.5 millivolt per degree centigrade, therefore minus 25 millivolt. All right, is that okay? 2.5 millivolt per 250 millivolts. Yes. Okay, 250 millivolt. Therefore, delta I C by I sub C1 would be equal to minus delta VBE which is 250 millivolt that is 0.25 all right divided by VBB is 6 minus 0.6 agree this is the expression and this comes out as 4.6 percent so it is not too bad 4.6 percent okay finally we consider the change in I C I sub C due to a change in I C B O. And here we have no escape, we will have to use the expression which contains I C B O. All right. Otherwise, otherwise we cannot uh, we have ignored the variation. Our approximate expression is V B B minus V B E plus I C B O times R B plus R E. Again ICBO may have changed due to a rise of temperature, all right, divided by RB plus beta RE. We do the same thing, we take IC1, ICBO1, IC2 corresponding to ICBO2, subtract one from the other and do this algebra, then delta IC by I sub C1, keeping all other parameters constant. This algebra simplifies to the following beta delta ICBO times RB plus RE divided by beta VBB minus VBE. Can you tell me why this comes? It comes because of division by IC1, right? Plus ICBO times R B plus R E. Now we have taken care of the variation of I C B O I C B O one, thank you. This is important, it should be I C B O one. This is delta I C B O, this is perfectly all right. Now we have <coughs> taken care of the variation due to I C B O and therefore at this stage when we are numerically calculating <coughs> that means <coughs> Wonderful, beta does get cancelled. That simplifies the expression further. Yes, very correct. <coughs> well, at this stage, excuse me, sir. Yes. So, in the first case, when we considered the vari uh, variation is IC due to variation in due to beta. Correct. Then that the expression uh, we have taken the simplified expression in which we assume that beta is much greater than unity. Mm -hmm. So sir, if beta uh, is uh, somewhere near unity, it's not greater than ten. Okay. okay. <laughs> if beta is somewhere near unity, we will throw the transistor in the dustbin. <laughs> 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 it's not useful at all. If if it if it freezes, if the circuit is taken to Antarctica, and due to temperature beta goes down to near unity. We will not, uh, the circuit will not work. And therefore, we use a beta, uh, we use a transistor with beta was 1000, for example. We will use a super beta transistor. Okay? okay? So, beta much greater than 1, unless that is so, the circuit is not useful. There are ways, even if you have a lousy transistor with a beta of, let us say, 10, I can increase it to 100 by making a circuit connection. We will see this circuit connections later. We will have to use two transistors in what is called a Darlington connection and that increases beta to 100, beta 1, beta 2, betas get multiplied. We will see this circuits later. Okay? Now, in this expression as I was saying, once I have achieved the expression, now I can, I can ignore this term compared to this term. I have already done so, I have already taken account of ICBO variation. This term would be very small compared to the first term, so we ignore this. And therefore, my expression becomes delta ICBO 
divided by note the way of writing this expression divided by VBB minus VBE divided by RB plus RE okay you see the percentage change now no longer are we dividing delta ICBO by ICBO1 <coughs> do you notice this this is not required okay number two so it is not a percentage change it is the absolute change the absolute change in ICBO reflects itself in terms of the percentage change except for a reduction factor that is division by this quantity naturally we want this quantity to be as large as possible. as possible as large as possible means we have to make RB plus RE as small as possible this is contradictory we wanted RE to be made as large as possible and VBE of course we can make large compared to VBB we can increase VBB but nevertheless whatever the circuit this is the factor by which the percentage change is reduced that is an absolute change in ICBO causes a percentage change in I sub C which has a reduction factor of this and we should aim at making this quantity as large as possible but as I said this is contradictory to the previous <coughs> assumption and life <coughs> is a matter of compromise transistor circuits is no exception all right here also you have to make compromises so let's take an example suppose ICBO the same example is 0 0.01 microampere at 25C and suppose the temperature increases to 100 125 let's say 100 degree centigrade rise in temperature causes a delta ICBO which is equal to 10 to the power I beg your pardon, 2 to the power 10, I am con considering delta ICBO, <coughs> so 2 to the power 10 minus 1 multiplied by 10 to the minus 8, so many amperes, which comes, which calculates out as 10.23 microampere, 1023 and then 10 to the minus 8, 10.23 microamperes. Therefore, delta IC by I sub C1 is equal to 10.23 microampere, okay, 10.23 microampere divided by 6 minus 0.6 divided by RB plus RE is 3400 plus 100. We should actually write, write this as 10 to the minus 8 because this is going to be a dimensionless quantity so right 10 to the minus 6 I beg your pardon this calculates out to 0.66 percent only okay 0.66 percent only therefore the effect of ICBO variation is not very drastic unless the temperature goes very high to to furnace temperatures for example okay thousands of degrees so ICBO is a uh, <coughs> harmless quantity as far as ordinary discrete transistor circuits are concerned but I must caution you that it plays havoc in low current circuits I, if I sub C is in the order of microamperes okay low current circuits are <coughs> the uh, are the uh, are required in integrated circuits in integrated circuits you want to make the volume as small as possible and therefore the heat dissipation is a problem so you want to pass as little a current as possible so that <coughs> there is as little a dissipation as possible okay there ICBO change causes havoc there are ways of reducing the effect of ICBO in those circuits also which will come to at the appropriate time now I consider what I considered was delta IC by I sub C1 due to variations in individual parameters keeping the other two constant as you know in the case of a multi variable function you can talk of partial differentiation and then if you want to find the total change then you shall have to combine the three and therefore 
if that is permitted here, that is if the changes are not very drastic, are not very large, then I can write delta IC by IC1 due to a change in all the three parameters simultaneously as the sum of the three, delta beta by beta 1, Rb divided by Rb plus beta 2 Re, this was due to beta variation plus delta Vbe divided by Vbb minus Vbe <coughs> plus delta ICBO multiplied by Rb plus Re divided by Vbb minus Vbe. Okay. <clears throat> Please close this. Firmly, in the process, due to the disturbance, I have made a mistake. Can you point out the mistake? A negative sign in the signal. That is correct. Wonderful. If I uh, take the same example, that is temperature going from 25 to 125, if I take the same example, the rule of thumb is that you can make a combination if the individual percentage changes, mind you, this is a rule of thumb, individual percentage changes are less than 10 percent. If it is more than 10 percent, then you cannot do this. Then you have to go back to the original circuit, consider the changed parameters, recalculate the current and calculate delta IC by IC1. Is the point clear? Right. If the individual changes, if each of these changes is less than 10 percent, then you can combine. In our particular example, they are less than 10 percent. The highest was 9.2 percent. And therefore, in our, in our example, delta IC by IC1, um, this calculates out as, you remember what was, the, what was IC1? IC1 was 40 million. If you remember, the Q point was 40 milliamps and 4 volts, okay. 40 milliamps multiplied by the percentage change, that is 9.3 percent plus 4.6 percent plus 0.66 percent. The positive sign here occurs because of a negative sign here, minus delta VBE, okay. And this comes out as 5 point, no I beg your pardon. No, the, it has been, it has been taken care of here. How did we calculate 9.3 percent? It was, it has been taken care of. This comes out as 58 milliampere, if I am not, 9 times, 9 plus 4, 13, yes. Think about it. We have taken care of this in calculating this percentage. I am glad you insist. <coughs> Otherwise, we would have made a mistake. Okay. So, this whole quantity is delta IC. You are absolutely correct. Okay. Fine. So, how much is this? 13? No. 13.9 plus 0.5 point or 5.2? 5 5 5 5 0.58 milliampere. <laughs> okay, let's see. 40 multiplied by approximately 14 divided by 100. That is 5.8. That is 5.8 milliampere. You see this change now. Delta IC, there is a change is 5.8 million here, which means that the current is now 45.8 million here instead of 40. 
Okay? And this was done by calculating the individual changes and adding them up. If we had done it exactly, that is by taking the three quantities, beta 1, b, beta 1, I, BBE 1, ICBO 1, and beta 2, VBE 2, ICBO 2, then it turns out delta I sub C exact, this has been calculated as 5.7 milliampere. So we are not too much off, okay? We are not too much off. This procedure, therefore, is a valid procedure. All right? Uh, yes, please. In the calculation of delta IC, you have added 4.6 percent for the whole That is correct. Should it be subtracted? No, no. Because this quantity minus VBE divided by VBE plus VBE, <coughs> you see, VBE decreases. And then the delta VB itself is negative. That's why we have added this. Okay? Is the point taken? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Same point, sir. Same point. Yes, sir. Right? So all the variations should be added. And the particular variation will carry the same whether it is positive or negative, depending on whether it increases or decreases. That's right. <laughs> then why is the second variation subtracted? That also should well, be. Well, because added. of the expression. Same what was the expression? VBB minus VBE. Mm -hmm. IC was proportional to this, and therefore delta IC is proportional to minus delta VBE. <coughs> you see, if you can say that these three factors, even though one decreases with temperature, they conspire to accentuate the error. And this is always the case. It's, an, it's a manifestation of Murphy's law. If something can go wrong, <coughs> it will. Here also, things go wrong, and even if one decreases, they conspire so that the error is accentuated. This is always the case, and you cannot beat it. You will beat it only to a certain extent. All you could do was to limit the change to 5.8 milliampere. In 40, it is 6 milliampere. Okay, so it's not too bad. Now, <coughs> an alternative BJT, bias in circuit, is as follows. An alternative in which RE is not used. RE is made equal to 0, is like this. This is C, R sub C, you have, this is an alternative BJT biasing circuit. You have the transistor which goes to ground. There is no resistance, RE. But the base, well, this is the signal source with an RS, Vs, coupling capacitor C1, there is a coupling capacitor C2, RL. The base requires a biasing. Now, we cannot do this biasing. We cannot do a potential divider biasing because then the stability would be very poor. Isn't that right? RE cannot be made equal to 0. So we have to think of something else. What is thought of is this. The, the base is supplied from here, that is from VCE <coughs> rather than VCC through a resistance. All right? So the base current, for example, can you, this resistance is let us denote it by Rb. If this is Ib, then this is Ib, correct? The base current is supplied from Vce rather than Vcc. Oh, one could argue, why not Vcc? Why not Vcc? Well, pardon me? No, um, that's not the cause. The cause is something different. There will be no stabilization. If it is supplied from here, let me tell you why this stabilization occurs. Yes. So you see, now what is IB? IB is VCE minus VBE divided by RB. If IC increases due to some reason, VCE decreases and therefore IB decreases and I sub C also decreases. Let me repeat this. If I sub C increases, then VCE decreases, this causes IB to decrease 
and this causes I sub C to decrease. On the other hand, if we have taken this supply from this is C, then such a thing would not have occurred. Agreed? Qualitatively, you can see this stabilization. All right. Now, <coughs> there is one problem, though. Yeah. Oh, this is the source resistance, signal source resistance. It does not come into the DC biasing. There is a problem. You see, because of the occurrence of RB, there is a there is a DC feedback. That is, whatever the current here is, part of the current is diverted here. So, from output to input, there is a feedback. We do not want this feedback at AC. <coughs> at signal currents, we do not want this feedback. So, what do I do? In parallel with RB? Shall we use a capacitor in parallel with RB? Let us see what danger. Or in series? <laughs> come on, come on. Make up your mind and tell me what you want to do. In parallel? Okay. Suppose we use a capacitor, then the whole signal will go here. For the signal, this is a short, and therefore the input signal goes over here. And this voltage, this voltage shall be equal to the input signal. The transistor becomes redundant, useless. So you can't do that. No. What is done is the following. It's a very ingenious solution, and suggested by. But the problem is that if I have an RB here, then not only, <coughs> not only there is a DC feedback, there is an AC feedback also. Part of the signal current also flows to RB, which you do not want. So, what is signal current? Pardon me? So, what is the signal current here? Signal current. If the signal is there, an incremental voltage here, yes. this will cause an incremental current here. Yes, sir. We want the whole of this current to pass through the load. We do not want a bypass. We do not want a D2, all right? We do not want anybody to share the signal current. We want the whole signal current to go to the load. So, what we do is the following. Instead of straight RB, we split RB into two parts, RB1 and RB2, okay? We split RB into RB1 and RB2, and from the middle point, we connect a capacitor a bypass capacitor to ground. Okay? Then part of the signal current still flows like this, but the signal current cannot come to the base. That is, there is no AC feedback. We have reduced the AC feedback. Not only that, the signal current cannot go to the output because of the capacitor. So, this is one of the solutions. All right? And this circuit is called a collector feedback biasing and you can show this will be one of the tutorial problems that if we follow the same type of analysis then delta IC by IC1 is delta beta by beta1 RB divided by RB plus beta2 RE this is due to beta variation <coughs> minus delta VBE divided by VCC minus VBE. In the previous case it was VBB, now it is VCC, that is the only change, plus delta ICBO RB plus RC divided by VCC minus VBE. You can show that for this circuit in which RE is absent, this is the total expression for percentage change in I sub C. And if you notice carefully, I have made a mistake again. This is RC. If you notice carefully, all the changes is that VBB is replaced by VCC here also. <coughs> and RE is replaced by RC. So, this circuit is equally effective in stabilizing the operating point except for that modification that one extra capacitor is needed 
to bypass the middle point of RB1 and RB2. In the next lecture, in the next lecture we shall consider FET bias stabilization. Okay.